What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to take a look at this animation right here. It's an infinite slider that goes in both direction with a scroll interaction and we're gonna make that with Next.js and GSAP. Let's get right into it. Alright, as always, there is a link to the live demo as well as a link to the source code in the description below if you are interested. So here I've created the Next.js application using the npx create next app with the latest flag and then I've deleted everything in the page.js, the global CSS, and the page.module CSS just to start with a nice blank application. And here I have the image that I'd like to use for this animation. You could use your own, it won't really matter, it's just for like a nice background. And I'm going to create an images folder inside of the public folder and put this guy here. So here I've added some basic HTML and CSS to make everything look good. I've added a next image in the background taking the full width and the full height. And I've added a slider with two paragraphs with the same words inside of it. And I've added some styling to them, making the second text in position absolute so that we have a proper slider. So here's the result. Nothing too complicated here. One thing that is important to note is we're actually using two paragraphs here inside of the slider. And why are we using the same words here? It is to create the infinite effect, all right? The second paragraph here, we've put it in position absolute with the left 100%. And so it is way over to the right here after the first word, right? If I put left 10%, you're gonna see that the second text now is, is right here, right? And so if we put left 100%, gonna see that it's way past and with that we can easily interchange their position to create an infinite effect. Now to slowly move the text we're going to use GSAP and we're using GSAP because we want to target the X% percent value meaning we're gonna move the text slowly by a percentage on the X axis. So here I'm going to install GSAP and then I can import GSAP here from GSAP and then to trigger that GSAP animation, I'm going to import the use effect hook from React. And with that, I can basically trigger a function inside of the use effect hook when the, the component mounts. And it's, it's basically the same as a window.onload, something similar to that. And then here I can request the animation frame towards an animation function. And I can create that animation function here. And then I also need to find a way to target the paragraphs here to move them incrementally. And so for that, I'm going to use the use ref hook from React. And here I've given the two refs to the two paragraphs that I have. And then I've created a next person value and a direction. And now I can easily use GSAP to set the position of the X based on a next person value. And I multiply that value by a certain direction to have it move in a certain way. And if we save that, we're gonna take a look here. Okay, we need to specify that we are on the client here because we are in Next.js and it's server side rendering. And now we can see that our text is moving. So basically we have a next percent, meaning a next position uh, in relative values, starting at zero. And then we are slowly incrementing that value multiplied by the direction to have it moved to the left. If we change the direction here to one, it's going to move to the other side, right? And so I'm going to put it at minus one for now. All right, so I've created this graphic in Figma just to illustrate to you what's happening, because uh, it's quite hard to explain without anything visually. So what's happening here is we are moving the text with a percentage value that's negative, right? Because the direction is minus one, we are slowly incrementing the percentage by like minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.2, etc. right? And so what we want to do here is move the two texts at the same time until it reaches minus 100%. And I'm just going to duplicate this here. And I have this line to represent the movement of 100% of values, right? It's the width of a text. And so I'm going to move it by minus 100% here. And then if I take the two texts and I move them by minus 100%, and so they need to be like this, you're going to see that the second text here is now perfectly aligned with the first one that we had in the beginning, right? And so what we can do is move the two texts by minus 100%, which is this state. And when it, when it reaches that point, we're gonna instantly move back the two text to X% percent zero, and then it's going to reset back to that place. And it's going to be so smooth that the user won't even see a difference, right? And so we can represent this here by doing a, if the X% percent is smaller or equal to minus 100, we're going to reset back the X% percent to zero. And I'm just going to speed things up here. And so here we're moving the text 
until they reach minus 100%. And you won't even see the difference. Now it moved back and you and it's an infinite loop. You, you didn't even see it because it is perfectly aligned since we're using relative values. And we can check here the numbers. And so you can see that it, they are moving, right? And then when it's gonna reach minus 100%, they're gonna get moved back to zero. And we are not even seeing a difference here. I can stretch everything. And here it's moving, moving, moving. And then it's gonna reach minus 100% and then reach back to zero and etc. And now we have a perfect loop. But we still have a problem actually. If we change the direction to be in positive, right? And so if we start, instead of going to the left, we're now going, gonna go to the right. And so, it's going to move, right? And so if we move by 100%, we're, we're, we're kind of we're kind of in some deep here, right? In the beginning, we want to have an infinite text, but we're having a dead space here right at the beginning. And so what we can do is check right at the beginning if the X percent is bigger than zero. And so if the direction is to the right, we can automatically put the percentage to minus 100 and we should have an infinite loop on the other side now. So you can test this out. And you can see that it's getting set at minus 100% right at the start. And then it's gonna reach zero. And then it's gonna go back to minus 100%. And we have an infinite loop on both sides now. Now, the last thing we wanna do here is add a scroll interaction just to change the direction and add a bit of movement when we scroll. This is the demo. And you can see that when I scroll, I'm changing the direction of uh, the slider. And there's also like a slight movement that goes with the scroll as well. So here I've imported the scroll trigger library from GSAP and I've created a new ref for the slider and then I've created the scroll trigger animation targeting the X to move it by 300 pixels. And so a bit of explanation here, I have a scroll trigger, the trigger being the document element. So it's going to start at zero here at the top and the end is going to be the full length of the window. And so it's going to be 100% like this and it moves the slider here on the X um, axis by 300 pixel. And so you can see that when I scroll down, it's going to move the X by minus 300 pixel. And so if I move up, it moves as well. Now it looks like crap because we are not managing the direction. We can do on update and then we have access to the event and then we can set the direction to be the direction of the event. And then we're gonna do minus one so that it's reversed based on the scroll. And if we scroll down, oh, we have an error. I believe the, the update here should be in the scroll trigger. So if we scroll down, it's going to change position. If we scroll up, it goes on the other side. I'm just gonna put this a bit bigger. And so you can see that now I'm scrolling up, it's changing and there's also like a slight move. And if I want the animation to be a bit more smooth, here the scrub, instead of doing true, I can put it at like 0.25. And now there's going to be like a slight easing. And now we have a perfect infinite loop with a nice scroll interaction. So if you like this video, if it helped you in any way, please like the video. It helps me a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.